actually brings us to our next topic, which was Elon Musk. And actually, before we get into that, I want you guys to comment. What did you think about this Star Wars uh, trailer? Comment on YouTube or our website, believe.love. And do you think they're disclosing things that actually have, um, you know, they're kind of like dripping some truth out into these movies? Or, or are they like kind of pushing like the certain agenda of what they want us to maybe believe or or getting us ready for, for the truth. That movie Arrival specifically was very interesting about uh, an actual alien uh, landing and then like the military's involved. It was very recent and it was, and Rotten Tomatoes gave it like a 97, it, which meant, and it was like, I'm really into that stuff and it was like an 83. Like 97 is like, you, we want you to see this, buddy. Like you, <laughs> Like basically it's like, to me, Arrival was something they wanted us to see because the rating was so high, and it was it was I. It wasn't like it wasn't it was like okay. Yeah, it wasn't like mind blowing. But our next topic is Elon Musk and what he's up to. And this guy, to me, is a real life. And I think a lot of us. I think we're all aliens, whether we know it or not. Like we're the aliens. We like got planted here. Perhaps I don't know. Um, in fact, the guy who. Uh, came up with DNA, basically said that. He said, the odds of us just randomly being here, uh, Sir Francis Crick or some some dude, he came up with the DNA double helix, right? And he said, the odds of us just randomly being here, it's like a, a storm blowing through a scrapyard and producing a Boeing 747. Like that's the scientific odds based on what he Knows. figured out. Yeah, yeah like... Um, so uh, anyway, so like Elon Musk is an interesting dude. He's a, he's the one in the news that's suppo- that's I guess credible. They say I don't know. Uh, I don't know what he really knows. I think he's I think he's a good guy. I think he knows a lot more than he's allowed to kind of get to. But he's the guy that has companies like SpaceX and Tesla that is kind of like a futurist. We could say that's sort of being allowed to be a futurist because I think there have been others that don't fit a certain agenda that aren't quite allowed to be futurists like Tesla and Dr. Royal Rife and uh, Lakovsky and people that get like maligned and sort of like die alone in hotel rooms. We've talked about that before. But Elon Musk is still kicking and he seems to be, the government seems to like him, so that's good. So he gets to do cool things. So what did you think about this story, Natalia, that was, um, let let me pop it on the screen here. Elon Musk. Oh, here it is. Here's what Elon Musk revealed about the ITS and SpaceX's Mars ambitions in his Reddit AMA, which is like a chat. What did you think of this? I don't think I read about what he said in the actual chat here, but what I, I mean, I'm just excited about what he's doing. I think we, we covered this a few weeks ago. He's actually he's planning rocket, else. rocket, rocket tra- travel, around the the world, right? From country to country. This is actually going to Mars. Um, And I was actually reading his description. I think it was on his SpaceX site. Um, So the details for me aren't really concrete enough for me to be willing to be the first guinea pig on that first. You're going to, you're going to go to Mars? One, once there's they're been quite a few back. other missions. Oh, are you? (laughs) Okay, so you're not first? Maybe I'll be one of the last. Not like the acupuncture. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, so you're. But to me, you know what it made me think of? What's that? Is I remember hearing when I was small, when I was a really young child, watching a news segment where they were saying, oh, there are scientists that are actually working on this. One day you're going to be able to FaceTime. They didn't use the word FaceTime, that's the word we use now, but they were describing it. One day you're going to be able to talk to people. It's going to be like talking on the telephone. Like, you're going to be able to see them. And I remember we were like, what? No way. That's what made me, that's what it made me think of when I heard this. Because I thought, right now I'm hearing this stuff and I'm thinking like, no way. I can't even imagine what that's going to be like. But I really think that um, he's going to make it so that rockets are pretty much yeah, I a don't normal know. thing for the average person. Yeah, I guess, uh, which is weird person. because apparently we have more advanced stuff. I mean, I, I, I don't know, like... But this is what the government is saying, and maybe he knows that, and that's what he's allowed to say now, that it's going to be rockets. 
I mean, rockets, I think it's burning fuel. And if we had something else, we'd have to admit there's free energy. So we have to say rockets now because if we didn't need fuel, we wouldn't need the oil companies. And the whole economy would, like ExxonMobil, I think, is the number two biggest company in the world and a lot of other oil companies. And then then if we had free energy, we wouldn't have poverty. We wouldn't have the monetary system and uh, or at least as a control mechanism and a whole shitload of other things would hit the fan. So now he says rockets. I agree. He does. And I, I think I think it's I think he's an interesting dude. I want to know. He knows a lot. Like, all right, they they get into this in this article. Um, interplanetary transport system. The uh, the ITS vehicles that Musk hopes to use to travel between Earth and Mars, otherwise known as the big effing rocket. And I didn't that's funny. It's actually that's the name yeah, of it. Big effing, and they actually say the full F word here. SpaceX made some changes to the design between 2016 and 17. Um, and they go into like the sort of the the dynamics of these things and how they'll be built and the rockets that will go uh, between Earth and Mars, the cargo. I think it was an interesting uh, article. They talk about the Raptor engines. Another major topic that users focus on was the Raptor engines. He unveiled a scaled down version of the ITS that uses uses 31 Raptor engines rather than 42. It got smaller, I guess, the, the Raptor engines. And it says, um, critical for SpaceX's ambitions to use the BFR, which is the big effing rocket to travel around Earth. The big advantage of getting somewhere in 30 minutes by rocket instead of 15 hours by plane will be negatively affected if, but also you might die as on the ticket. So that goes... <laughs> Along with what you're saying, you want to live if you go on these things. Right? Yeah, because I was reading them. Like, uh, pretty much, it sounded like uh, the commercials for medicine, right? Where it's just like, <laughs> "Hey, we're going to cure your depression, but you may have cancer and lose all your, both arms and a kidney." And you know, that's what this kind of sounded like. You, you, like you know, you'll you may make it to Mars, but what what were some of the issues that I saw? That was like. Uh, well, he says still concerns of radiation to the passengers. Right, fuel the fuel might burn off mid trip, which that could be I bad. mean that's horrific. That's that like there's bad. no worse scenario than that in the middle of space. And uh, what else did they say? Oh yeah, that they were having You know, people were concerned about the smooth landings. <laughs> so I don't know <laughs> yeah, how rough exactly the landings are. So I just kind of said hmm, we've got some tweaking to do in the, in the model, but it's cool to see where things may end up well what kind of technology they're going to have at their fingertips 10 there's some kind of now. like thing too or apparently we shot missiles into the sky after admiral bird went to uh antarctica and like nuclear missiles operation dome or operation uh operation fishbowl or something somebody will I, i've seen the comments the flat earth people are out there i understand we shot missiles up and they blew up in a weird way that there's some kind of like thing, like some kind of thing. There's a there's a word, some kind of belt or something. And some people say we've never even been to space. And when we launch rockets, we launch them like horizontally. And this this, I, you know, I saw this video recently and uh, I don't know, like the guy was making a lot of good points. And I told my friend like and then I found this thing about that we live on a pair. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? Like the NASA, the Neil Neil Tyson DeGrasse, the official like NASA scientist guy, um, Neil Neil DeGrasse Tyson or Neil Tyson DeGrasse, whatever. Who I don't I don't necessarily I think he's probably a great guy. I don't know. I don't know. I think he's getting paid, and I'm not sure everything he's saying is like the whole truth. I don't know. By the way, it's his truth, maybe. So maybe it is. Maybe it is. I may, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Maybe, but to me. I'm not so sure. Like, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. I don't know that the Earth is flat, but it's weird that suddenly, because a lot of the, the the flat Earth map is wider at the bottom, like the southern hemisphere. Like, if you look at the United Nations logo, I'm going to show you this because it's very strange. Oh, what, what's going on here? Okay, United Nations logo. If I can manage to get a new tab up. Because... 
This is a flat earth map, apparently. Um, all right. This thing right here. So like the Southern Hemisphere in their map, and again, I'll say there, I'm not, I'm not uh, totally on board with this. So the Southern Hemisphere in Antarctica is supposedly surrounding us. And then like the, the North Pole would be like in the center. So like everything makes sense because you could still fly around the world because the, the Southern Hemisphere, but apparently there's no flights. You can't go. You, you can't find a flight from South Africa to, Anna, to Argentina. There's no flight. You got to go to the Northern Hemisphere. You can't go from Australia right now and get another flight to somewhere else. And the flights don't exist. And of course, the, the people say, well, it's because nobody's going there. I don't know. I don't know. Here's what would disprove this map. When, 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 what I'm thinking about doing, it. my friend Andrew says we should do. Do a Kickstarter, because I'm open to proving the Earth is round. I don't, apparently we've already proven it, but all I know is the government, they're great. I love the government, but there's a lot of bullshit. We're, as humans, we are full of shit. I, I hate to say it, like almost in every fucking category, we're full of shit. And I'm not 100%, but I try to be in the 90s. Like, so let's, if we can get into the 90s and I can get higher too, sure. Like, you know, that would be good. But we can do a Kickstarter one day. We'll get pyramids going, and then we'll we'll get a plane from Argentina, and you just go straight south, and we should hit we should come out on the other side, <laughs> right? And that would that would throw this map off if we can do that. If somebody wants to do that, I will be very happy. But you know, and then my friend Andrew's like, well, you can you can view a telescope, and you can see the planets and Saturn's rings, and like apparently you can see the space station, and I'm like. Well, okay, so I guess there's really things out there. I don't know, but these the flat Earth people have a lot of things that I thought I thought the whole idea was crazy like nine months ago, and I listen and I'm like, oh, that's kind of strange. Like, why can't we go to Antarctica and like, why is there a treaty with 55 countries and that's the only thing everybody agrees on is that Antarctica is like, what's going on in Antarctica and. Uh, why did we fire a bunch of nuclear missiles straight up, us and Russia, and try to, like, apparently what they say is hit this dome. I don't know what the hell's going on. But then I see this thing from NASA saying that we're living on a pear. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on with this? We're living on a pear? Like, what is that? Did you? So, so I don't know what's going on, but I think Elon Musk, did you, what do you think about the pear? Let's... Go ahead. Tell me your thoughts. I'm more intrigued about what you were saying about Antarctica. I didn't even... Oh, there's a I, lot going on there. I knew nothing you know, about John, any of that stuff. Secretary of State John Kerry went to Antarctica on Election Day. Like, what's... Like, why? I mean, why? Like, okay. Of all the places. Yeah. It's, maybe it's he was pretty, trying to avoid the election. <laughs> the election, right. He ran. Yeah. That could be sure true. So I put Pear Earth NASA in here. Look at this. Well, here's the Oh, that's like extremely parachute. <laughs> right, I thought well, you were just the saying. Dude. Here's the dude. This guy. Uh, Neil. That's him. Neil. I've always heard the earth wasn't like a, mo a perfect really? marble. Uh, yeah. You heard that? Yeah, I heard that it wasn't like a perfect marble, like that if you rolled it down, you know, a I hallway. I never heard that. Yeah, I always heard it was like a little misshapen at an axis kind of, right? We're, like... I don't know. I don't know, I don't know about Santa always. Claus? I don't know about always. I've always heard the term round, but I mean, yeah, like every learn, globe it's is like round. It spins on an axis that isn't, you know, perfectly. Uh, yeah, yeah, that that rotated or something. It rotates. Yeah, but I've heard. Yeah, but I've heard before that it was a little, it's a not pear? pear shaped. No, not a pear shaped. Right. But I have heard before. Yeah, I've never in my life heard that. I have heard that it was a little misshapen. Show us the pear shape of Earth, NASA and Mr. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. Now, again, they don't say it's a pronounced pear, but it's just very odd. And I was really, my mind was blown because at first pear, I thought. The pear photo looked more photoshopped than the that, than, than Earth. <laughs> I think it was, but my mind was blown because I'm thinking like, oh, this, I don't, the Earth's like, no, like, I know what's going on here. Then I'm like, I listened to this thing from NASA. The Earth is a pear shit. It's got, it's a little fatter in the bottom. And I'm like, what? Like every, it's like I found out there was no Santa Claus. Like, do you remember? Maybe he lives in Antarctica. No, Maybe that's what they're trying to keep us from. No kids Just should kidding. watch this. So you don't, I, I was like, Santa Claus was made up for nine years. Like, that's crazy. He's in Antarctica, kids. I don't, and then, and then I see, I, I watch this thing. Like every globe we have, 
That's fo- and then the, the picture of the Earth is we're photos. Gonna ruin, we're going to ruin some six year old. The life. picture, I'm so the, sorry. the iPhone four picture, His fault. Marble yeah. two is photoshopped, <laughs> and then I have to watch. I, I figure out I've never even seen the real Earth from space. Like, why don't they just take one of those damn things they send to Saturn and turn it around and take a picture? I thought that's what they'd always. I thought no. that's what they'd done. No, no, they photoshopped that. It's we have two. High. We have two pictures of Earth, and we spend billions and billions. So then, and then I hear the pear, and I'm like, what the hell's going on here? I live on a pear? <laughs> so anyway, so tell us what you think of Elon Musk. I would love to hear. 